And then one summer when I was 12, uh, there was a fenced off pool. So I used to climb the fence and stay in the shallow end and try to see if I could figure out a way to get to the other side, like without touching. And then like, uh -huh. you know, by the end of the summer, I was like, I could swim. Yeah. And yeah. like, you don't think of entrepreneurship the same way, but the idea is like, you got to get in the pool and you got to figure it out. And so I was kind of like, I want to get in the pool. Hey, Carl, how you doing, brother? Hey, Sean, what's going on, man? Doing good, doing good. Life is good. Happy Friday. On to a new Friday. week, you know, but uh, yeah, yeah. So thank you for your time today. And uh, we have a we have a guest I'd like to introduce today. Um, I'd like to introduce you to Kareem Blair, who's um, the owner and um, operator of AB Logistics. Welcome for joining us, Kareem. Hey, hi guys. Hey, guys hey doing? Kareem. Glad to have you on the show, man. Good Glad to see to you. Be here. You, you look hot, but you also have a hat on. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, I just, these are one of the things that happen when you're in Toronto. You think about where you want to be and you think about where you have to be. <laughs> well said, well said, man. Well said. Good to have you on the True. channel, man. True. Yeah. So, a little bit of background about Kareem. Uh, he's a former IT director and an IT project manager, primarily specializing in non for profit organizations for the past 20 years. He, he recently made the bold step of becoming an entrepreneur and launching his very own logistics company that serves the greater Toronto region. So we thought we absolutely have to have you on and, and talk to you and, and hear your story. So thank you again, Kareem, for joining us today. Thanks. I, again, like I'm happy to be here. And uh, it, was, it was a fun transition. And um, some, sometimes you don't spend so much time thinking about your journey when you're busy doing you kind of caught up in the day to day. So every now and then it's nice to reflect and kind of see like where I've been and where I'm headed. That, you know, that's a good, good segue because actually I want to know a little bit more about that. So tell me about that journey. And if you can reflect with us, uh, I'm curious to hear some of your background and um, uh, your, uh, I guess your relationship. I know you, you and Sean are good friends. So I'd like to hear a little bit more about that as well. Okay. Well, it's, I, Given the format, I won't speak forever about me and Sean and our relationship, <laughs> our, our bond. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so my wife always kids that he's my wife. So anyway, but, uh, <laughs> same here. <laughs> but um, so my my journey really like is, I, I'm like a closet nerd essentially, and so I like sports and stuff, but technology is like a always a true passion, and so that was kind of where the push came and you know meeting with sean somebody else who is in love with technology and love playing around with new things and new software and so it was kind of natural to kind of get into tech and so working through that you kind of also with the idea that i kind like as like as an aside my mom always kind of had this guiding principle that i she kind of taught me from an early age that like basically if you can help why not there isn't really leave things better than you found it is the simplest way to put it. So with that, like I was, my love of technology and that's kind of how I got into not-for-profits because I, I could take my tech love and kind of help technology and help people at the same time. It was kind of a fit. So just rolling through that over time is like kind of how I found my niche, so to speak. And then, you know, you grow up, you get married and like now having children and stuff, it was just kind of, you're rolling through this journey over time. And I like the idea always was that I would get to do my own thing at some point. Not because it's it's bad to be an employee, but <laughs> it's not. You know, I, I you can say it. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been there. Yeah. Yeah. It's I don't know. You know, sometimes like it's certain times, especially um, doing project based work. You can understand that there's time constraints and approvals or change management that can really delay the execution of just getting things done. And um, so sometimes when you're in control of those things, you 
can layer things together quicker. You can um, accelerate decision making uh, and focus on things that are more in alignment with your objectives. So those are a lot of the main like drivers to getting to go do something along with the idea that like, so sometimes you don't know you can do something until you do it. Right. Right. <laughs> and um, that's, that's it. So, you know, it's, it's funny, like this is a, a, not the best analogy, but I, I never grew up and got swimming lessons and all that kind of stuff. And then one summer when I was 12, uh, there was a fenced off pool. And so every day, like the classes would end there at 11 and from like noon to three, nobody would be in the pool. So I used to climb the fence and stay in the shallow end and try to see if I could figure out a way to get to the other side, like without touching. And then like, uh -huh. you know, by the end of the summer, I was like, I could swim. I wasn't really a good swimmer. Like I'm not going to tread water and relax, but I could definitely get from one edge to the other edge. Yeah. And yeah. like, mm -hmm. you don't think of entrepreneurship the same way, but the idea is like, you got to get in the pool and you got to figure it out. And so I was kind of like, I want to get in the pool. I like, I now like I'm that. Swimming, man. Now I'm swimming. <laughs> So, I, I like that analogy. I really like that analogy, especially from you getting from one end to another. I mean, uh, as you're saying, it was as a project manager, <laughs> <laughs> has, has anyone else heard this story? I guess, I guess not, right? <laughs> but it's very interesting. Like, it's a great analogy. Um, you know, teaching yourself how to swim, getting from one end to the other. Uh, that's almost PM as well. Like I, I mean, project yeah. management and freelance, they, they and freelancing, they, it's they go hand in hand because essentially that's what you're doing, right? Like, yeah. I, I I really like that. I, I see how that um, how you're trying to get to one end to the other, but learning how to do that. Certainly, when my early days of PMing, that's exactly how it was as well. And uh, Sean, I'm sure you can relate as well, eh? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I definitely want to unpack that further. Um, and the analogies just make it so crystal clear and I can, I can definitely relate. Um, I'm, I'm fascinated. Like what compelled you to um, move from the IT director, IT project management to becoming an entrepreneur? Um, what was that catalyst for you, the driver? Well, a big part of it was like being ready to be totally honest. Like what, I had had some small discussions with you, obviously, kind of about like the idea. And then like you, we talked back and forth about it and about like some of the pros and cons and the, the push away from, cause I had been doing consulting work already. So the idea to like transition didn't feel as far of a stretch, but changing industries did feel like, whoa, wait a second, wait, this, this is totally different, but like digging into the industry and uh, probably like one of the things that was the most eye-opening was like like my shortest projects are like three months right so like er everything takes long just because of the the nature of the way it works even with agile projects where you're doing sprints and stuff it, you're still releasing small packages you're not at you're you're not finished and um the the appeal with the logistics was you could start and finish something like in a day. So you could go in, you could talk to someone, assess what their situation is, set up the contract and then it was done. So like, the, as an aside, like if you guys go and order like a pile of bricks for your backyard, cause you're going to make a hut, like, you know, you buy the bricks, the bricks come to your house, like that it's over. Then you get to build your stuff. But like that part of the project is finished. And that was really like the appeal that like you could start and finish something and it doesn't have to linger. Where like every every software implementation has to linger. Change management has a whole cycle. Like, you know, there's massaging egos and massaging people. And like, there wasn't much of that. It was like, as if you had tight customer service, you were well organized. So that like uh, the, the PM stuff I could transition was easy, but the appeal was like, hey, there's a start and stop. Yes, because I don't get that. <laughs> and so like, that's that was it. And so it was kind of, that was really the big appeal. And then like, then the pandemic hit and then like, it was kind of like, oh, it's, sometimes, sometimes timing is good. <laughs> <laughs> so I did want to ask uh, Kareem, um, with the, the, the pandemic, um, have you found, you know, in being home, I imagine it's created a, 
a surge in people still wanting product but not physically being able to go out to stores and places to get. Um, have you experienced, um, how have you been impacted um, and the logistics company through this transition? Yeah, it's been interesting just because um, like, you know, the idea like reaching your niche, so to speak. And uh, that like that's one of the like the difficult things you find when you're starting out, like with any business that um getting that laser focus, because it's kind of like you're, you want money. So you're going to say yes to everything because you kind of need to keep the lights on, get things going, so to speak. Uh, but in a weird way, the pandemic almost forced me to like, tighten in like what I was trying to do because originally like the original focus was broader and like not really what's the best way to describe it not really in an area that actually when I thought about it more long term served me so having to react to like market conditions and tighten your focus actually helped like my company be a lot better and more productive because like you weren't chasing um the unicorn if that makes any sense just things that just didn't make sense weren't re a real fit as much as like so you focused on things that were a bit more aligned and um yeah because one of the the downsides to the pandemic is there was also a lot more like fly by nights and people looking to take advantage like like in everything there's like always a price war and a race to the bottom and i was always like I, I don't want to get involved in that because it's like not sustainable. Like it's, and so you want to like you also want to provide viable income and stable jobs for people at the same time. And so that was if there was a an issue, that was something that I I found is that people were looking to take advantage of folks with the way things were working. And um, so spending some time finding the right stuff was probably a big takeaway from the pandemic as far as like teasing out the right things to look for what's and like looking past just the first year and just getting your head above like if you're going back to the swimming analogy focusing less on just getting your head above water and trying to focus on like where you're actually trying to go and what type of things are going to help you get there and so that's that's really what you got to work on during the pandemic uh, with being home and having like endless amounts of time <laughs> and so um as, as much as being distracted and like getting all types of information and, and learning quite a bit uh, as far as immersing yourself in something new but that that was really the, the biggest takeaway it's like okay like because you can spend a lot of energy doing things that aren't going to get you anywhere and so that's that is that's it along with like the financial implications like Financial based decision making is, I guess, the best way to, is a good way to frame it. Because I, I, I didn't have like a commerce background and all that kind of stuff. So learning and applying a lot of those principles were all very new. But it's interesting to see like how like entrepreneurship benefits life. And I, I mentioned that in that, um, so I'm, because I'm forced to pay attention to like ledger seats, like, you know, think like receivables, outgoings your um, cash flow, things that were kind of like, I mean, they're accounting formulas and graphs, but somebody else takes care of that. Well, that I'm somebody else. And so with that, like you kind of, it forces you to kind of learn and understand those things. And so why I, I bring that up is now in my life, I have my annual budget and then I have my, my monthly targets. And then so you, you, you can kind of see your regular bank account, which is like your your life flow. So things are coming in and out. How much do I need to like achieve what I want to do personally, like aside from like the business cycle? And like, are those aligned? Because they, they need to be. Like, that, like you need to like, if, I mean, if your goal is to be a millionaire, that's fine. If you just want to be comfortable, that's fine too. But being able to manage both of those together and the idea that like, what understanding that stuff takes away a lot of the stress. Because then, like, you it kind of focuses you on kind of what you need to do, versus like um, the you're proactive versus reactive, and like being in a reactive position is difficult because like you, you 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 really don't ever feel like you're in control, and like because of like you know project manager, like, 
everything starts with a plan. You need to know what's up so that, like, you know, because if you know what's up and then something comes up, you can react. But if you're just reacting, it's everything is hard. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. It, that that makes so much sense. I'm curious to know now. I mean, you gave us several examples of the, I guess, lessons learned, right? The, the oh. being a niche, uh, yeah. being a niche, um, or knowing your niche, uh, understanding that now you are a player uh, that has to understand the economics and 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 the finances. I'm curious to know what are now that you're in this new career path. And beyond, I guess, COVID in 2020, mm -hmm. what are some of the, I guess, biggest learnings you got and uh, maybe challenges uh, that you're overcoming now in this new career path? The biggest challenge is like um, newness, essentially. So uh, with every industry, when you're new, brand, rec brand recognition is difficult. Like if you want to buy something, like nine, ten, nine out of 10 people jump on Amazon because it's easy. So Amazon doesn't have a brand recognition issue, but every new business does. And so that's probably the biggest hurdle. And there isn't, I haven't really discovered the best way around that versus like, like I said, just to dive in, start meeting people, talking to people and starting to deliver on what you say you're going to do, whether it's the smallest thing or the biggest thing, because um, people like people they can count on and uh and the idea that like one principle i've stuck to is i'm not going to compete on price so a lot of times i'll walk away from business if people are very happy with everything but they want it cheaper because it's if it's one thing i'm i'm uncomfortable working in that format because i i can't i'm not going to win a race to the bottom mm. and so the idea is like there's value ads that you're going to get in other ways. And if, if they don't suit you, that's understandable. Then, you know, we're not necessarily a fit. So that that's what I was saying about alignment. Like every person out there isn't the ideal customer for me, just like every client isn't the ideal customer for your business. And so when there's alignment, it's like let's work together. And so, and like part of the thing too, is I'm happy to refer people to other folks and other people that will be more of a fit. So when something does come up, that's a fit for me. They, that's part of it too, is like, okay, we're not a fit, but you know, now I'm ready to deal with you. And stuff like that has also been pretty beneficial. And so that's that's kind of the, the learnings going forward. Along with, like I said before, the financial stuff is probably the biggest thing in terms of the using like, financial calculations to make sound decisions rather than mm. just things feeling right yeah because a lot of things that look right and feel right like say this is cool what does the math say and the math says nah or it says <laughs> like you know you need to make three times that for this to be viable then you're like wait a second okay <laughs> then maybe it doesn't make sense and so that's that's taught me a lot there's there's been a bunch of times um I've thought things would make sense and they look good on the like surface level. But once you start running your calculations, you start to realize things aren't quite as um, clear cut. They don't make, they don't make the, the same sense you thought they did, which, which is why it's really helpful to have those things because it detaches you from an emotional decision. And like, you can just, you can do something based on something that's like, I don't know if you want to call it scientific, but it's, I feel like it's sound. It's it's a non-emotional decision, which is which can be difficult because there isn't there isn't always a huge number of people you're bouncing your idea off, right? Because at the end, like the buck does stop with you. So it's yeah. nice to be like, okay, well, here's like the little decision matrix I can go through. So uh, I wonder if I can ask a follow-up. Um, sure. I'm curious, like two things, right? So. Uh, using that same analogy um, that you're swimming, you're trying to get end to end. So you're used to as a PM getting end to end. And now in this new world, you get end to end. Um, would you say that you're, if we use that analogy, are you still in the middle? Are you still learning um, this this new frontier? Yeah, for sure. And like, yeah. one of the things that like, I guess, I think this is also like cliche with the whole entre entrepreneurship's a journey. And, yeah. but like, it really is. And I don't know that like, um, there's ever like an end 
if that makes any sense. Okay. In, in, in that, okay. because you get to a certain point, but by the time you get to that point, you're not who you were when you started. So you're you're evolving, right? So because you're mm-hmm. evolving the whole way, like your goals are evolving at the same time too. So mm-hmm. like what you envision for your business in year one and what your business is in like year three and year five, it's probably not going to be the same thing. And interesting. That's okay. And that that's okay. It is, right? Like it's the worst thing I feel like you could do is like, okay, I have this hard set vision. That's it. And you never go back and touch it again. When mm-hmm. like every six months you learn things, people are influencing you in different ways that like you should always be able to reassess and kind of see what's going on. Because you can compare it to the plan you have but also add or change things. Like like if there's a new feature enhancement and you're stuck to only what you're going to do and you can't take advantage of it, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, yes. And so, like I, it doesn't I'm also to, ki- yeah. Go ahead, sure. No, no, sorry, I have to cut you off. Continue, continue. No, I was just saying that like, because like sometimes if like you get, like not you specifically, but the idea is like we're so prescriptive about how we're going to go about doing something that like you put blinders on and that's all we can do versus oh, yeah. like, you can go ahead on your journey, but still like take it in. Cause if there's an opportunity to do something better along the way, like you need to be, it's, it's a fast moving adaptable environment. You need to be able to be able to make change. And if, if you're too focused on just the one thing, I feel like you not saying you don't want to focus on your goal, but you have to, because there's environmental factors that are going to change. You, you need to be able to adapt to some of those things. Well said, well said. Uh, I was just going to ask another thing where I'm curious to know, again, using this analogy, I'm getting to, I love the pool analogy, so I'm going to just use it. Um, now that you've you've transitioned this career path, have do you look back and is there anything that you miss in your previous path? The only thing that like, I wasn't say the only, but one of the key things that I miss is um, new technology. And like, it's, it's one of the reasons I enjoy being around students. Cause they just have, they remind me of this, they're like, oh, nothing impossible. <laughs> and it's, it's interesting to really hear that. Cause sometimes you get beaten down in life and you're like, oh, oh, you can't do that. Or oh, that'll take way longer. And just, yeah, why not? And it's really interesting to hear that. So that's, if there's something I miss, that's kind of what I miss. Cause there's, there's lots of like new technologies and codes and stuff. And I'm like. I delete. <laughs> and that's just because you got other stuff going on. You don't have time to be thinking into like, you know, the emerging technologies and playing with like a lot of that stuff. Like like in a different life, I I would be playing a lot more with blockchain, like messing with Angular and playing with like emerging technologies and stuff. Where now I'm kind of like, I heard of it and I know about it, but it's like, I'm not elbow deep at all. <laughs> and that's it. Oh, I know what I'm good at, right? So it's like <laughs> <laughs> you can't dabble in that anymore, right? No, not, not this time. Yeah, no, I got it. it's, it's fun. It's fun. That's yeah. what, as as a miss, right? like it's but like like my background technically is in development, and so it's always like in the back of my mind. I'm like, yeah, I wonder if I can still do it. And then you kind of want it, but then you're like, I mean, there's only a certain, so much time in the day, right? So you're just like. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, that's what that cost benefit does. It lets you know, like, paying for development quicker. So. Yeah, I can't. Uh, uh, I can definitely relate. I, I, I <laughs> yeah. understand where you come from, man. <laughs> uh, you know, I just want to take a chance again to thank you for your time and the opportunity to to hear your story and your transition, and you've given us some really. Um, great analogies as well as really critical factors as it relates to right size and delivery and managing your price points and not uh, avoid racing to the bottom. Um, and also that focus too, just um, like a fountain of wisdom you just um, applied upon us. So I really appreciate it. Well, the one thing I always took from you that is uh, is drive. Like. I'll, we can talk about a whole bunch of other things, but that's really where it starts from. And if so, if, if you don't have that, you have it in abundance. But that's, we have, there's a whole bunch of other, <laughs> it's true. But like, that's, 
that's really what it is. Because like, there's gonna be things that come off. There's roadblocks. Nothing's easy. But if you, if you don't have that drive, you're not you're not gonna get it done. And just to touch on the swimming thing, I do find it funny that three black guys are talking about swimming. Big <laughs> difference. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Well said, well said, sir. <laughs> some some cliches are I, true. I had to take swimming lessons because I, I had to do it for physio. I ripped my uh, my uh, tendon, so I, I had to use swimming as a part of physio. So I learned. Oh boy, but that, that was like, it. yeah, but that was like 15 years ago. <laughs> so I wasn't swimming up to that to, to then. <laughs> call you yeah. Carl Phelps? <laughs> no, no, not even, not even. <laughs> Yeah, in regards to my swimming, yeah, let's just not go there, man. <laughs> We've had a few races in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, cool. Well, it's definitely a pleasure as always. Thank you, Kareem. Carl, you know we do what we do. Uh, um, thoroughly enjoying these sessions with you. Um, yeah. And to our audience out there, so uh, there you have it, folks. Here's another discussion about transformation and in the real world. So definitely join us next time for another hard-hitting episode of Transformation on As Is To Be. Peace. Peace.